Hi guys, welcome to another video for the IELTS Task 1 report. In this video, let's write a report regarding a bar chart with a lot of data. The chart below shows the average time commuters spend traveling to work each day in four Australian cities between 2002 and 2010. As usual, our report consists of an introduction, an overview, and body paragraphs. Let's write the introduction first by paraphrasing this question. The first word to paraphrase in any chart question is the word chart, which can be paraphrased to graph. Additionally, you also want to specify the type of the chart to the readers. In this case, it is a bar chart. There are plenty of synonyms for shows, but this question shows the time going to work by people in four Australian cities. So this is a comparison, hence the word compare is the best choice in this situation. Daily is a synonym for each day. This phrase can be paraphrased to travel time to work. The average can become on average. Commuters are basically the people living in these cities. So we have other words like citizens or residents. For the place and time. We can use metropolises for cities. Between and can be converted to from to. Here you can also describe the time span more specifically as you can see that the given period in this question is not consecutive years but it gives you data of every two years so in this case you can inform the readers that the time here is at two years intervals with that our introduction is finished now for the overview again this is a dynamic chart which shows a period of time and for this type of question the most important feature that you need to tell the readers is the trend of every category that appears and to figure out the trend, you only need to look at the beginning and finishing point of the categories. So Sydney increased over the period, Perth increased and Brisbane increased. For Adelaide, it didn't increase over this period because the beginning and finishing point are the same. However, you should not say that it remained unchanged because it actually changed in the middle. So for categories like this, you can describe it as fluctuate. So Sydney, Perth and Brisbane increased. Adelaide fluctuated. Okay, so we have figured out the trends first. The next key feature to look for is that if there is a category that is always the highest over the entire period. So for 2002, Sydney was the highest. For 2004, Sydney was also the highest. And we can see that for the remaining years, Sydney was still the highest. Now, this chart shows the average time people went to work, so let's write. You can see that three out of four cities increased, so let's not write all the names of the cities here. Instead, I'll say most areas. Next, Sydney is always the highest, meaning people in Sydney spend the most time going to work. To reduce repetition, a useful synonym for over the surveyed period is throughout. Always write overall at the beginning, and our overview is done. Let's move to the body paragraphs. Now, we have to think of a logical method to separate our data into each paragraph. There are several ways of data separation for dynamic charts. The first way is separating by trend. For example, body 1 for the increasing trend and body 2 for the decreasing trend. But in this chart, we have three of them increasing. So if you put these three in one paragraph and Adelaide in another paragraph, your report will look unbalanced because the first paragraph will be too long compared to the second paragraph. This will not look good. So another way to separate data is by categories, for which you simply put each city into a separate paragraph. Then you'll have four of those. 
Personally, I only use this method when there are three or fewer categories, and I rarely write a report that contains four body paragraphs. Most students simply divide categories into two and randomly put two cities in body one and two remaining cities in body two. This seems very straightforward and easy. However, if you separate the data this way, you're not showing any logic behind your way of separating data. You need to show a logical reason for your data separation. Therefore, randomly dividing the categories is actually not better than just writing only one body paragraph for the whole report. This leaves us the third method of data separation, which is by highest starting points. This method is very useful for charts that contain categories that behave in the same pattern. So we have four cities here. I'll put the two cities that started the highest in the first paragraph, which are the two cities that were the highest in the year 2002. And they are Sydney and Brisbane. So these two go in body one and Perth and Adelaide go in body two. Now, before going further into the details of each paragraph, you should firstly write the topic sentence for each body paragraph. However, if you write your topic sentences like this, you're actually not giving as much information to the examiner, because when the examiner reads this topic sentence, he still doesn't understand why you put Sydney and Brisbane in this paragraph. So he might think that you randomly put these two cities here. Therefore, you need to explain the logic behind your data separation by saying this paragraph is for the categories that started the highest. So now the examiner not only knows what this paragraph covers, but also your reasoning of dividing data. For the next one, simply put, concerning the remaining categories, or in this case, cities. For every category, you must describe the starting and finishing points, and then choose the most important feature in the middle. So for Sydney, I'll choose this point in the year 2008, because from the beginning, it increased continuously until 2008. So there is no point in reporting the data for 2004 and 2006. Just say that it increased continuously to 2008 and decreased back in 2010. So this is how I describe the data for Sydney. but we can actually give it a little brush. The word decreased here can be paraphrased with another word that conveys more meaning. So for data that increases and then decreases back, we can use the word recede. Then instead of 37 minutes, I'm gonna describe the extent of the decrease by saying it receded by two minutes. So instead of saying something decreases to a certain point, you can specify how much it decreases. And a way to paraphrase the last year of the period is to say, in the end. Lastly, let's never forget the language of approximation. For data like these two, which do not stay exactly on the graph lines, you must include approximations like approximately or roughly. Otherwise, your data could be considered misleading or inaccurate. For data like this one or this or this, which stay exactly on the lines, you don't need approximations. But for these two, you definitely need it. Now, Brisbane. We can see that it behaves just like Sydney, which increased to 2008, then decreased in 2010. So for the linking words, use the word similarly. So by saying this, you're explaining in advance to the examiner that Brisbane is likely to move in the same pattern as Sydney, which is a comparison. I'll also talk about the beginning, the finishing point, and a key feature in between, which is this highest point. Surge is a word to describe a significant increase, and it is appropriate for this instance. And let's not forget that 27 minutes is an approximation, and we have to say about. The highest point in the middle of the period is called a peak, and you should specify that in the sentence to show the examiner that you know what a peak is, which is a common data reporting language. You may wonder why I didn't use the word peak for Sydney, since it also has a peak. 
This is because we only need to describe it once in the whole report. And the point is to show that we actually know what a peak is. There's no extra point of saying it twice. Leave room to show off other languages. So the first body is done, moving on to the next. For Adelaide, I'll choose these three main features. And if we think about it, the pattern of Adelaide is just similar to that of Sydney and Brisbane, which increased here and decreased here. But if we write just like how we did the other two, you show no extra reporting skills. That's why we have to choose another way to report Adelaide. Now, Adelaide possesses a special feature, which it began and finished at the same level. So let's say it increased in the middle and then went back to the beginning point. You can see that the beginning and ending points are the same, so let's say it declined back to its initial level. Initial point is paraphrasing for 24 minutes in this instance. So by saying this, we emphasize that Adelaide moved around the same point. This way, although Adelaide behaved very similarly to Sydney and Brisbane, we actually managed to describe it differently with another style and diversified our reporting styles. Finally, Perth. Again, this point and this point must always be included. And we see that it stayed the same for eight years. So just say that it started here and remained unchanged, then increased suddenly here. And this is our completed report. Thanks for watching and see you again in the next videos.